I have a question about a niche within the niche, right? One wheelers, and then there's one wheelers who ride with chairs, are chair wheeling people. And we've seen videos of this, right? <laughs> um, my Dude, shout out your friend Chris, uh, Chris Tulio on, uh, yeah, your He's friend awesome. Chris on Instagram. Dude, uh, shredding it on a chair, and I've seen you guys on the chair. Are you guys gonna develop a chair or what? Like, what's <laughs> happening here? Because I'm ready, I'm ready to start my chair wheeling journey. <laughs> Honestly, if you told me that there was no liability involved with any of the products, <laughs> we would have a chair. We would have a chair on the market, like yeah. the best chair, you know, made out of like machine aluminum. It would leather be arm bit, leather <laughs> arm. Like cup holders. By the way, there's and... nobody that loves chair riding next to Tulio than than this guy right here. Like, okay. you can give him a. If you say like, let's go to the beach right now and ride on chairs, he will literally stop whatever he's doing. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. So, so our setup. Well, when we when we first got into it, well, obviously we were inspired, inspired by Chris, but and the other OGs within the community. But um, when we first got into it, we made a video and we posted it on Instagram. It's on our YouTube. It's everywhere. But we basically went to Walmart, and you know, we're just screwing around in Walmart. We we picked out a chair that was a beach chair, just like the only chair that's there. We bought some a uh, pool noodle. We bought some flip flops. We had it in our mind what we needed to do. We basically had to get a chair. We had to get something to support the bottom of the chair. We had to get sandals to activate the sensor of the concave. GT foot pads. Um, <laughs> so we bought we bought all that, and then we're like day two into riding, and like Mike's riding, and Mike's leaning like this. I'm like, what's going on? And his chair is totally bent. <laughs> the, the, the feet of the chair are totally bent. So you know that 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 chair didn't last. And then we realized, like, I think Mike told me, like, we should buy what, what Chris has. So we we found what Chris uses. It's like some REI chair that was like literally sold out the other day, probably because everybody in the Roman community is buying it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that chair is like really sturdy. So we, we take that chair, we do what Chris does, which is like put a, a wood pan. Uh, you, a need a, you need a two inch by one inch, the length of the it's frame like of the chair, uh, yeah. both front and back. You need a couple pairs of sandals, some zip ties, you're rolling. Just watch one of our videos. We'll, we'll uh, if you want the details, I'll send it to you. But um, <laughs> it's getting if you've got so the right popular. setup, man, like literally like that chair has not moved or bent or anything. Oh my god! We put like, Hundreds of miles on on these chairs now, and the, uh, it is no doubt like really, really, really. Like so we were so sitting cool. at a we were sitting at a hamburger joint nearby, um, and we were. This is where the idea came about. We were literally just eating lunch. It was uh, Nick, myself, and Christy, my wife, uh, Nick's mom, and uh, I said we just. I think we we can really make the board better if we just create a concave foot pad. And, and what, while we knew we weren't gonna saw skateboards in half to make this product, we knew it was the starting point to create a concept for what we had envisioned. And so with my skateboarding background, I'm like, okay, let's go to the skate shop. We're gonna buy a Power Peralta pool deck. Nice. Why? Because they're wider. They've got a nice kick. Um, the concave's usually good. So we grabbed a Power Peralta skull and rail um, deck. We cut it in half. We, uh, I think we might've had to redrill holes. We did. And uh, the problem was, um, and which had to be, you know, immediately re-engineered, is that the, there's so much concave that in order to bolt it down to the rails, you know, you've got like this and you're screwing in and the board's not laying flat. Um, something that bothered Nick so much when we were developing our first version of the one tail was like, we've got to figure out how to make this thing completely flat on the bottom. So that meant going to a thing like, uh, and by the way, I'll fast forward, we, from the skate deck, we then created our first version of that, which was our own skate deck in its own mold to try to achieve a much better fit. So we started with the, the one tail, obviously, and then from there we branched out to carbon fiber fenders. Um, and at the same time that we were doing that, there were other members within the community that were creating great products. And so we figured that, you know, working together is probably better than not. And so we partnered with uh, members of the community and sort of put them on a pedestal to where, you know, we're selling a lot of one tails, we're selling a lot of carbon fiber fenders. The customers that are buying from us for these products probably, you know, would love to buy your product if it was on our website and they may not know about it. So it's a great opportunity to work together and, you know, put that on our website. And so. We started doing that, um, carrying other people's products, the Float Life's products, like a year or two into our company, and you know it worked out great. And other, you know, as the years went on, there's lots of writers in the community, a lot of smart, um, business-minded people that created their own products, and so we saw opportunities to work with those people and bring their products onto our website. And um, it's been a great relationship with all the people that we work with, and and it's sort of you know created an opportunity to where we put these products that maybe some people don't know uh, about really well, and we put them on a pedestal on our website with all the other products that we have, and it sort of elevates not only our brand, but the brands that we partner with.
It's incredible how much goes into our foot pads. I think we're now north of 20 different foot pads, not all wood, some urethane, um, but there's a lot of work that goes into that. Hand shaping, guys that have been doing skateboards for 20 plus years, so we're not, it's, you know, it's not Nick and I, it's, it's people that know what they're doing that um, only do that. And the people that work for us only build craft and my products, mm. whether it's our stands, our foot pads, that's all they do. Um, it wasn't like that forever, but we got to a volume where we had to make sure that we didn't get into a situation where um, we couldn't make them. So uh, we finally figured out how to make this board super flat on the bottom by CNCing with the top mold, um, and, and that's what created a perfect fit foot pad for, for one wheel. Um, and we've been doing that, I, I don't even know the count, but it's it's thousands of foot pads that we've uh, that have graced the one wheel and and made it a better experience that hopefully that for, fit is so perfect that i didn't even know it was made of wood like it's you know when you look at because you they're painted black right i mean typically some are black uh, some are uh ma some are like a stained maple okay wood, wood the, the only yeah. one that i've experienced personally was black and i and it's like it's heavy and nice and like it's i mean not heavy like like hard to yeah, lift like, yeah it's thick and, yeah, yeah yeah and uh yeah. uh yeah, and it's so nice, but I had no idea it was made of wood until uh, until I read your bio and said that you still make them out of wood.